Hello and welcome to the drive session of SEW EuroDrive. My name is Larry Aiden. I'm a member of Mac Solution System Solutions in the department Stationary Technology. Today I want to talk about the modular atomization system for warehouse logistics, especially for the requirements of high bay warehouses. I want to talk about four topics. First is the reduction of the commissioning time, the lightweight construction uh, for stacker cranes, the requirements on energy infrastructure, and at the end, I want to talk about the standards and legal basis. In our generation C, we're working with software models with our movie kits. These have got the advantage that they are completely 100% parameterizable. We don't need any programming and that's why we can reduce the commissioning time up to 80%. All our movie kits have got a standardized and documented field bus interface, which brings the uh, advantage that uh, you can copy your project also if you got uh, technical different requirements. For example, in X direction, you have got two um, travel drive instead of one. In the next project, you have got two uh, travel drives in the lifting axis. And in the next project, you have got anti-sway, and then you don't got anti-sway in, uh, in the project. The field bus connection to the upper PLC is going to be the same. Our movie kits, uh, or we have movie kits in different categories, in motion and energy. Motion, that's to control the X and Y axis, for that, we're using the movie kit sticker current every drive for um, or to uh, control more drives in one direction. We can add the movie kit multi axis controller for the load handling device. We also have got three movie kits for a telescope. You can use uh, the movie kit positioning if you got more drive, which has to be synchronized you can use the movie kit gearing. And since this year, we have got the movie kit combi telescope. With that, you can uh, control four belts with one telescope. The lightweight uh, construction of the tower brings a lot of advantages for the uh, manufacturer, but for us, we got like the new task to get rid of this oscillation. We got this oscillation in all directions. In X direction, the, the tower uh, oscillates during the acceleration or deceleration time. Um, in the Y direction, we got the ro uh, wire rope elongation. And in Z direction, we also got uh, oscillation when the load handling device goes into the shelf. First, I want to talk about the oscillation of vibration in X direction. For this, we got two solutions. One is a pure software solution. This is the movie kit motion add-on anti-sway in function tower sway. For that, you only need some uh, f physical values to do the commissioning and the rest is done completely by the software. Or in our other solution, we can use additional drive mounted on the top. This is our top drive solution. And on the tower, there's a strain guard mounted, which detect, detects the oscillation and controls the upper drive that the tower stays in the correct position. I have brought two videos of a project which was realized in South Korea. This is a stacker crane with 40 meters height and the transfer point is in the highest position. This is the worst case for the anti-sway because the load is always on top and then you got a big oscillation. As you can see in the video, this is really extreme because we got a big oscillation and it takes a long of time till the oscillation is done and we can control the load handling device to put the pallet on the transfer point. 
Now I will show you the same application with activated uh, anti-sway. As you can see in the video, we got one or two oscillation and then the tower is in the correct position and we can uh, control the load handling device. This is a really good example how powerful our anti-sway function is. The next vibration I want to talk about is in Z direction. In Z direction, that's the direction of the storage. And this vibration um, comes up if you pull out the box of the storage and because the friction between the shelf and the box, the tower is pulled in the direction of the storage. And then you get like a belly. That's why we're always talking about belly sway. This can be solved with the same solution as the tower sway with the movie kit motion add-on anti-sway. Also completable, um, parameterizable with physical uh, values. The commissioning time can be done really quickly. This is a project, or this is the first project that we've done with this function. The first video is without anti-sway, the second one is with activated uh, anti-sway. What I have also have to mention, we did this project with Körper Supply Chain, and for them it was also the first project where they needed as a function, because the stacker crane is only allowed to be a commission with this function. The manufacturer um, checks this. As you see in the video, you're, all, you're scared that the load handling device impacts the shelf and damage the load handling device or the shelf. And that's why without this function, it's not allowed to use the stacker crate. With activated anti-sway, this looks a little bit different. Now we're getting the first box. Now the handling device is getting back again, pulling out the box. We're seeing that we still have got an oscillation in the tower, but it's much more less. And if the box is on the, whole, uh, on the load handling device, we could immediately go on to the transfer point. The last direction we have to talk about is the Y direction. That's the lifting axis. In uh, this case, or this vibration, Appears, um, or, uh, appears because the load is um, going on the load handling device or off the uh, load handling device into the shelf. And because the load uh, point is changing, we got like a rope, a wire rope elongation, and the load handling device starts to oscillate. For this, we got a function in the MovieKit Stacker Crane Multi Axis Controller. It's called combined encoder evaluation. In that case, we're using the motor encoder and the external encoder, combine it so that we have a high resolution encoder signal with, with directly machine connection. I also brought a video of a project what was done in France. Please concentrate on the blue line and at the end, please concentrate on the distance between the blue line and the load handling device. As you can see, the load point is changing, the load handling device is going up, up and up, and then we got a big gap and the shuttle falls into the shelf. And because of that, we have got like a mechanical st stress for the for the drivers or for the wheels of the shuttle. With activated combined encoder evaluation, you can see that the gap is always controlled back again and the shuttle can drive smoothly into the shelf. Concepts for sustainable energy infrastructures. We can offer three solutions. The classical way would be the inverter with the brake resistor in that case, the energy 
is given to the application, in our case the stacker train, and the regenerative energy which is coming back is turned into heat by the brake resistor. In that case, we don't save any energy. If we want to save energy, we can use a regenerative power supply. In that case, the energy is given to the uh, stacker crane and the regenerative energy which is coming back can be used in the factory or it can be feedback into the power grid. We would save up to 40% of the energy in the solution. Since 2018, we, are, we have got the energy storage um, system also in our portfolio. In that case, the energy is given to the, to the buffer and the complete energy is pulled out of the buffer for this application. For this solution, we won in 2019 the Environment Technical Prize in Baden-Württemberg. All three, three solutions can be combined with the movie kit Stacker Crane Every Drive. In this movie kit, we got energy saving movements included. Please concentrate on the video. Afterwards, we're going to talk about the energy counter and the energy monitor. Now we're seeing the movement without energy saving movements. The stacker crane runs with full uh, dynamics in both axes. And as you can see, we reached the target position in the Y axis already and the X axis is still running. Now we're riding back to the transfer point also without energy saving movements. And it's the same again, the Y direction reaches the target position and the X axis is still running. Afterwards, we're going to ride the same cycle again, only with the activated energy saving movements. In this case, the X axis starts to run and afterwards, we're starting the y-axis so that we can use the brake energy for the y-axis. Both axes have reached the target position at the same time, or almost the same time. And now we're driving back we're reducing the dynamic values of the y-axis so that the, we get regenerative energy on the complete travel and we can use this energy for the x-axis. As you can see on the energy monitor on the right side, uh, beside the video, we're saving up to 10% of energy only by activating these energy saving movements. More right, you can see the energy monitor for the non-optimized mo mode or cycle or the optimized cycle. The red line is the application power and you easily can see the application power is with non-optimized cycle much lesser than with the optimized uh, cycle. Well, you also can see that the spaces under the zero kilowatt line are much bigger than with the optimized uh, cycle. <clears throat> if we would have a brake resistor, the, the spaces under the zero kilowatt um, line would be changed into heat and we would lose energy. This stacker crane is also um, <clears throat> or also has an energy buffer system. You can see in the blue line, this is the DC link. This is like the energy level of the buffer. And the yellow line is the power grid. Um, as you can see, the application power is 29 kilowatts and we're only loading with six kilowatts. And that's the reason why we can reduce the uh, cable diameter for the power supply. This is now my last topic for today. 
Last year, we got a new version of the Dean EN528. The requirement on safety functions for stacker cranes. We can use our functional safety, which is 100% integrated in our inverter, to answer these requirements. For example, we can use safe limited speed, SLS, to give employees access to the safety areas. Or we have the safety limited position, the SLP, which uh, can be used in the CSA 30A card. This can be used, for example, to get rid of the switching elements on the track, or we could uh, realize a bufferless storage uh, warehouse system because we can use the space of the buffer to get more storage capacity, or we could uh, reduce the size of the building. This is now an example of how you set up safety limited position. As you can see, we only have got four values to, get, to do the commissioning. We got the, uh, the start of the track, the end of the track, the deceleration and the ramp monitoring. And then you would be already done with the parameterization. What I also want to mention, our functional safety system is really, really good. We can activate STO in 10 milliseconds because we don't get any bus or SPS runtimes because everything is calculated on this safety card. This was a quick overview of our modular optimization system for warehouse logistics. If you got any feedback, questions or new ideas, please contact me. In the right corner, you can see my email address. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.